Needle Felt in the Dragon, Stage 3, How to Put Core Wool On. Hey, it's Pam from Ben McFuzzy Lugs, back with my regular Thursday's Needle Felting tutorial, and today's is our third part of the Needle Felted Dragon series. If you haven't already, I'll put links to the playlist for this dragon up here somewhere. Uh, you can see Stage 1 is creating the wire armature, Stage 2 is my terrible fail with the feet and now stage three padding them out getting them a little more dragon like okay so the first thing i'm going to do is put a wee base of this core wall over the whole dragon now because it's just bare wire it can be a bit slippy so what i do is i hold the top and then wind down i'm starting from the the base of his head winding down the neck and then i give a little figure of eight as I go over the wings area and I'm just felting a couple of times so it holds in place just now that's nowhere near felted it's just to hold the ends in place I'm separating out fairly small sections the main reason I'm just using small sections is because with the wings and the legs and the tail and everything it's actually kind of tricky to not get everything tied up those ends of the wings there they were catching on the wall the entire time and now just chunking up the chest area where the wings are or where your arms are or whatever that's going to be a little more chunky because of all the muscles there so I wind a figure of eight over that and bulking up his body a little bit and then coming in and doing a figure of eight over the legs as well this not only holds them in place but it just adds a bit of bulk there a bit of fiber because that area of your body is going to be a little more muscular and then just finishing up there by winding right down the tail and I'm just going down the split end as well this just gives something for it to grab on when I'm adding the next bits much later on when I start coloring it and again it's just a little bit of felting to start with to get all the wool to stick so I can get on with with wrapping some wool in so again here down his legs just giving one layer of wool holding it at the top and then winding all the way down um, it's easier thankfully with the wireframe i'm able to just kind of spread his legs a bit into an undignified position and just felting in at the top so that's holding and i'm just going to do the exact same here just for his wings um just for the bottom bit of his wings because i want more bulk there his the fingers of his wings they're actually going to be quite a bit finer so I won't bother adding any core there I'll just go straight with the coloured wool and you'll see when I get to that now once I've got everything in place covered a little bit I start felting things in just to hold it and then just just deciding to cover his mouth at this point and just wrapping right round the top of his the top of his mouth and down his head a little bit and then down his bottom jaw a couple of wraps around there and then down his head to secure it a bit as well I'll bother about building up I'll worry about building up his head later on and then just gonna felt that a little bit in place to smooth it all out and to hold everything and now because the body the whole bulk of the body is a little bit scrawny this is usually the case just under the arms and above the legs just wrapping around a few times to build up thickness in all directions and the same with the the top of the tail near his legs that wants to be thicker and fading down to thinner down towards the end so what i'm doing here is starting to add some muscles to the to the dragon and I'm just doing that by taking a small piece and rolling it into a tube where it's going to be thicker at the middle and thinner at the top and the bottom. And as you can see, I'm felting that onto the front of the leg. And this is just giving some meat in the muscle. Quite often what I would do here is also wrap over the top of that once it's tacked down a little bit, wrap a thin layer of wool to act as almost a skin but we're going to come back and be adding different colours later. So I don't mind if you can see a little where this roll is. Exactly the same here. I'm going to make a much larger roll. 
but it's going to be thicker in the middle and thin tapered at the end and that's just to bulk up his belly and a bit of his chest because if I just kept wrapping round and round and round he would get fatter in all directions I just want him to have a bit of a chest so I add extra fiber in the area I want that to be again you could wrap a thin layer of fiber around as a skin to hide the joins but I'm going to be adding color later so I don't worry about that and now we've got most of the core wall down and if I didn't say before this is the felted this is the carded corridale um, I'll leave links to to that down below um, so mainly what what I have to do now is just felting it all over to secure it as I've said in many of my other videos you're always thinking the direction you put the needle in is going to be perpendicular to the surface so as you can see my hands moving all over the place I'm rotating the dragon this is one reason why I don't use a felting surface because I like to be able to move them in all directions and also the pieces that are rolled to put on are fairly loosely rolled so I can squish them with my hands and manipulate them in the direction I want and that makes it easier to actually shape it rather than if I made a really firm shape to start with and then felted it onto the body I'm kind of stuck with the shape whereas in this case I can squeeze it I can manipulate it a little bit and felt it into position and here's the bit where I discovered that that um, air dried plaster was absolutely no good and um, how easy it comes off but I'm really glad I didn't wrap the feet at this stage because now I can work on them again and so just spending all the time firming him up thinking of the directions where I want extra muscles so I was leaving like a curve over his back where his wings are and um, because that would be quite muscular I'm also felting down into his mouth into the center of his mouth because eventually I'm going to want the edges raised where his teeth are going to be and a little lowered in the center gives him a bit of expression now mainly when I'm doing a sculpture like this I'll sit in front of the TV stick a film on and just spend a good deal of time felt in it there's no point rushing it it's going to take two three four hours to get this far okay so thanks for joining me if you liked videos like this please come again every thursday and see my step by step of my dragon um if you have any ideas of the direction you would like to see him go in i've got some plans in my head he's definitely going to be purple and pink but other than that i'm just letting him flow how i however he wants to be but just leave any comments for any ideas that you would like to see should he have a tongue or fire coming out of his mouth, uh, spikes, ridges down his neck, should he be cute and cartoony, should he be ferocious, just let me know what you think. Thanks for joining me.